This week, the color problem. Oh. Oh. Ah. Dad! Dad! Come and help me out and get this wardrobe. I've got a cart. Oh. Dad! I can't do it all on my own. God. Will you come out and help me? Oh, God, the door's gone. <laughs> oh. I think it's Regency. see? That would have been a good mirror, that would. <laughs> Must be full of worm. That could be worth two or three hundred. Oh, blow me, must be dead. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, too well with it. Well, it'll make good firewood anyway. <laughs> I don't get any help around this place. I've got to do it all by myself. I bet he's got his feet up watching the television again. A lazy little git. Oh my god, it's another horror film. <laughs> Your face is horrible, horrible! I don't know which is more gruesome, the one on the screen or the one looking at it. <laughs> Get the potion, the potion, I must have it! <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'll have him or no. <laughs> Come your neck. I want blood, blood. I don't know. I think someone's been there before, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great stupid lummox. Here, don't switch it off. I was watching it. What are you trying to do to me? I could have had a heart attack. Well, you won't get one from overworking, that's for sure. Didn't you hear me calling? Uh, it must have been when the werewolf was having a go at the bird. What with him howling and her screaming, you stood no chance. <laughs> But well, that's marvellous, isn't it, eh? It's mad. Look, I'm home and I want my tea. That is marvellous. I'm out all day flogging my guts out while you're in here watching werewolves bite bits out of birds. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a fair distribution of labour, that isn't it? Well, there's nothing else to do. You could clean the place up. It looks like a junkyard out there. <laughs> or this house. That's just as bad. If it wasn't for that brick wall in between, I wouldn't know where the yard finished and the house starts. <laughs> I'm not putting up with it. You've got to do your share. You're not sitting here all day enjoying yourself. Enjoying myself? Watching that? Hard work, that is. That's the smallest screen in the world. I reckon Gulliver must have found it on one of his travels. <laughs> when are we going to get a new set? I'm trying to pick one up off of the round. Well, I picked that one up off the round in 1937. And you promised me you were going to buy a new one. I said, but we could afford it. You can afford it. You've been saving up long enough. You've got 300 quid stuffed in one of your spare gum boots. How do you know? Don't worry, it's still there. You has got no right going down my gum boots. <laughs> Those dirty little ends. I could get athlete's foot. <laughs> buy us a nice colour television, that money would. 23-inch screen. Everything in colour. I got my art set on one of those. If I had a colour television set, I wouldn't want anything else for the rest of my days. Oh, <laughs> Shame, shame. Well, you're not having one. It's a waste of money. I've been saving this up for something much more important. Such as? I'm going to buy a car. A car? What do you want a car for? Cos I ain't got one. I never had one. Everybody I know has got a car except me. I should have a car at my age, Dad. I mean, what chance do I stand with the birds without transport? And they don't want to know you if you ain't got a car. Thank you for a very nice evening, Harold. Oh, that's all right, dear. How do you want to go home? Horse and cart or the underground? <laughs> I mean, what, what sort of bird is going to put out with that? If we had a colour television set, they wouldn't want to go home. Look, I'm not spending my life sitting in front of a television set. I'm too young. I will get out and a bell. What? On these roads? It'll take you half an hour to get to the end of the street. Nah, it's no good having a car today. Before the war, that was the time. Nothing on the roads then. I had one. You had one? How could you afford a car? Well, we had it all on the knock, didn't we? A five on my car cost me. What model was it? A Triumph Nat. Oh, what? 
Ah, <laughs> what memories. A hot summer day, the hood down, the open road before you and a bit of crumpet leaning up against your gear stick. <laughs> That's what I want. I used to be changing gear all day long. <laughs> I've gone through more gearboxes than you've had hot dinners. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days. Four gallons of petrol, eight bob, straight down to Brighton. Bed and breakfast, seven and six. Tanner for the chambermaid. And fourpence for a packet of Watsits. <laughs> Permissive society. They don't know what day it is. They ought to ask their mothers. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty old devil. <laughs> You see, you've done it, ain't you, eh? I mean, I never had the chance. You've had your life. But me, I'm expected to sit down and watch television. Well, I'm going to make up for lost time. I'm going to buy a car and get around a bit. I'm taking delivery first thing in the morning. I don't want a car. I want a television set. I don't care what you want. It's my money. I've been saving it up for years. I'm buying a car. You won't get me out in it. Oh, no, I won't. <laughs> it's only got two seats. Me and the bird... You can run behind if you like. <laughs> you have to get a wiggle on, though. It does 120 miles an hour. Yeah, typical of you, that is. Doesn't matter about me. I've never asked you for much in my life. And now, when I really want something to brighten up me last year's, I'll get the thumbs down. Ah, it's my own fault, I suppose. If I'd saved up some of the money I've spent on you since you was born, I could have bought my own television set. Now, whatever you spent on me, you've had back ten times over. I even gave you the meat off me plate during the rationing. <laughs> Only when you couldn't find your teeth. <laughs> if it wasn't for my national health stamps, you wouldn't have any now, would That's you? That's right. Go on, bring that up again. Throw it in me face. Remind me I'm living here on your charity. Oh, look, I don't mind keeping you. I mean, that is my duty. I realise that. Oh, don't bring duty into it. I don't want that. If you can't do it out of love, don't do it at all. Oh, well, I didn't mean duty. I mean, I don't mind looking after you. I'm your son. That's what I'm here for. But it's just, I want to get something out of life for myself sometimes, that's all. There's not too much to ask, is it? No, of course not. It just hurts me sometimes when I think what other sons do for their fathers. <laughs> I just wonder where I went wrong, that's all. Charlie Miller bought his father a colour television set. He's a good boy, that Charlie Miller. Oh, uh, well... Perhaps if I had 15 girls on the game, I could afford to buy a television set. <laughs> and God blimey, he's done 10 years porridge, he's got three dodgy strip clubs, he's the biggest villain in the West End of London, and everybody holds him up as an example. The vicar thinks very highly of him. <laughs> he gave a lovely altar cloth to the church. Yeah, he nicked it from that one in Ipswich, didn't he? <laughs> I'll bet he didn't give the vicar them silver candlesticks, though, did he? No, he had them away a bit sharpish, didn't he? <laughs> and I'll be a well off as Charlie Miller's dad, but you've never had any bent gear off me. And what thanks do I get? Charlie Miller gave me dad a colour television, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you want? Do you want me to go bent? Of course I don't. What was your values going then? I mean, I could have joined Charlie Miller's gang when I was nine. You used to give me a clout on the ear roll just for talking to him. Quite right, too. He was a bad influence. What are you getting on about him? Because if a rotten, stinking piece of scum like him can look after his old dad, it don't say much for you, does it? I see. So that's what you think of me, is it? <laughs> well, it isn't any worse than the value you put on me. I'm not even worth a new television set. There doesn't seem to be any point in carrying on, really, does there? None at all. Now that we have got down to the nitty-gritty, <laughs> now that we have finally ripped aside this hypocritical facade of family love, we expose it for the ghastly charade that it all is. Obviously, one of us should leave. Yeah, me. I'm not stopping here watching that silly thing. Right, they clear off. Right. I'll go and get my things packed. Good. That won't take long. One mangle and a pole. <laughs> Where are you going? Mind your own business. I've got friends. I don't need you. I never have. Yeah, you go out to Charlie Miller's dad. Oh, I will. Yeah, you'll enjoy yourself there, watching his colour television. They've probably got one in the bog as well. <laughs> You're nicked. Well, 
All I've got to say to you is this. If you go down to Brighton in that rotten car of yours, and if you're doing 120, I hope the brakes fail. Thank you. <laughs> Charming to the last. Peter, however much our paths may diverge in the coming years, be assured I shall always treasure this moment. And up yours too. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, well, I won't bolt up. He'll be back from Charlie Miller's in five minutes after late night line-up. But why do I always have to feel so guilty? <laughs> Roll on tomorrow morning. <laughs> right. You can open your eyes now, Muriel. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> it's a beauty. <laughs> what an original colour. <laughs> I've only had it since this morning. It's an XK120, isn't it? Yes, it does 120 miles an hour. I just drove it here. You are coming up in the world. It's a big improvement on the horse and cart. Yes, well, I don't blame you not wanting to go out on that. But I thought with this, you and me might make some beautiful music together. Mm. Yeah. I like fast cars. Mm. Speed does something for me, you know. It makes me feel yeah. all sort of... So... Inside. Does it? Mm. <laughs> How about a quick trip now, then? Oh! <laughs> Not now. Oh, well, what about the weekend, then? No, I don't suppose you... Why not? I'll pick you up Saturday morning. Look at that, Brighton. All right, then. Ten o'clock at your place. Mm -hmm. Bring an overnight bag, eh? <laughs> I look forward to it. Mm -hmm. Johnny. Harold? Oh, uh, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, see you Saturday. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I've got her! I've got her! <laughs> Muriel Duddy! <laughs> After two years of me tongue hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all down to you, my darling. Oh, if she performs as well as you do, it'll be money well spent, I can do it. Oh, oh the colour television, the silly old twit. <laughs> hey, Dad! Dad! Come here! Oh, yes, I forgot. Yes, he's still round Charlie Miller's. With his beady little eyes watching play school, I suppose. <laughs> Morning, sir. Hey. Oh. Good morning, Constable. Mr. Um, Harold Steptoe. Yes. Is uh, Mr. Albert Steptoe your father? Yeah. Well, what's wrong? Well, I'm sorry to inform you that he was picked up last night by the. Oh, now look, he's innocent. He's not a member of the Miller mob. <laughs> I mean, he only went round here to watch television. Look, look, we, we had a row, you see, and he walked out. He's completely honest. He's an old soldier. He's got medals. No, no, sir, I'm sorry to tell you that he was found early this morning in a state of exhaustion on the canal towpath. What? Seems he was wandering about all night and finally collapsed. Oh, God, where is he? He was taken to the West London Hospital, suffering from exposure. Exposure? Doesn't seem right for you to allow the poor old gentleman to wander about all night in this sort of weather. Oh, I didn't know. You, um, had a row, you say? A family matter, perhaps? Private? Well, n no. He, he wanted me to buy him a colour television set. Oh, yes. Yes, a boon to the old folk, television. And I don't suppose you had the money to buy it for him. Uh, uh, well, I did, but I wanted to buy a car. I see. I see you've got your car. Yes, I got it this morning. And the old fellow's in hospital. Yes. Yes. Well, you mustn't blame yourself, sir. <laughs> These things do happen. Yes. Well, uh, uh, if, if you would excuse me, uh, 
I'll go and see him. Well, if you would like to come along with me, sir, we have a car outside. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. By the way, sir, you will get the um, road tax licence before you take your car out, won't you? Hey? It's out of date. So what? I paid him 25 quid for... It's... <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Of course. Good. Come along, then. Let's go and see if the poor old gentleman has made any progress. <laughs> The X-ray should be round in the morning, nurse. Yes, doctor. Uh, uh, excuse me. Yes. Are you the doctor? Yes. Are you the son? Yes. How is he, doctor? How is who? My father. Oh yes, of course. Uh, that will be all for now, nurse. There's nothing more we can do at the moment. Let me know immediately if there's any deterioration. Uh, yes, certainly. Well, now, what can I do for you? Uh, it's, it's my father. Your father. Oh yes. Uh, tell me. Uh, how did he come to be wandering the streets like that? Well, we had a row and he left home. Ah, uh, that would explain it. He's obviously had a traumatic shock, that would be it. Allied to the exposure, that would account for his condition. What condition? I'm afraid your father is suffering from amnesia. A loss of memory. Well, now what it means. <laughs> Quiet. Uh, fortunately, we found a letter with his address on it and that's how we contacted you. But can't he remember me or... Or where he lives? No. Possibly because he doesn't want to. What do you mean by that? His amnesia could be self-induced. It sometimes happens when people wish to blot out very unpleasant memories. Uh, may I ask some personal questions, Mr Steptoe? Yes, of course. You live together? Yes. Just the two of you. Your mother is dead. Yes. When I was little. You are all he's got? Yeah. You go out to work and... He stays at home. Yeah, every day. <laughs> How do you get on together? Oh, all, all right. I mean, we have our ups and downs. Some days is better than others. I see. him. And yesterday was a down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you don't know him. He can get on your... something rotten. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm sure. I'm not making judgments. Uh, you provide for him. Yeah. You're the breadwinner. Yeah. Does he contribute anything? Nothing. A very humiliating position for him to be in. No doubt he was a very active man at one time. Yeah, up until I left school. <laughs> well, that's the picture. An old man alone at home, brooding. His son has taken over as head of the family, outstripped him physically. Replaced him, you might say. He feels redundant, unwanted, unloved and deprived. His life at home has become intolerable, and so his subconscious mind takes refuge by erasing all memories of it. I think you'll find that's right. Are you a psychiatrist? Good Lord, no. I'm the ear, nose and throat man. <laughs> but I know as much about it as they do. I... <laughs> Look, tell me, Doctor, is he going to get better? In my opinion, his recovery and future well-being is entirely up to you. Yes, I thought it would be. <laughs> Can't he remember anything at all? Apparently not. The only thing he keeps repeating is colour television and Charlie Miller. Does that mean anything? Yes. I'm afraid it does. Can I see him now? Yes, of course. Try not to upset him. Yeah. He's in there. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. This is nice, isn't it? Little room, all on your own. You are in the Princess Margaret Rose Wing here. <laughs> But that was a dull thing to do, wasn't it? I mean, wandering round the streets in this weather. Hello, Doctor. I'm not the Doctor. <laughs> well, who are you, then? It's me, Harold. Harold who? Harold. Harold Steptoe. Who's that? Me. Never heard of you. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. Yes, you have! Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Look, I am Harold, your son. I haven't got a son. I'm on my own. No, you're not. 
You call me dad? You don't keep calling me dad. Yeah, I'm sorry. Look, let me try and help you. But perhaps something might ring a bell. You are Albert Steptow. Never heard of him. Don't interrupt. <laughs> well, I'm mean, going to give us a chance. You are Albert Steptoe and I am Harold Steptoe. We live in an old house in Shepherd's Bush. Where's that? You know where Shepherd's Bush is? <laughs> it's in London. Where? London. Never heard of it. Yeah, but... <laughs> oh, well, anyway, that's where you live, with me. We have a big yard with a stable. What's a stable for? To put the horse in. Horse? Yes. Yeah. Horse. Gigi. <laughs> That's a big animal with four legs, you see, and it's got oh, a tail. I know what an horse is. I'm not daft. Well, then, can't you remember anything? Now, now, think. I try. Uh, 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 wait a minute. Uh, the, the, the horse. What's its name? Delilah. Ah, uh, never heard of her. No, well, we haven't had her long, just a few weeks. Now, we had one before that. Now, we had him for years. Do you remember his name? Hercules! Yes, 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 that's it! You've got it! We've broken through! Now, 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 I used to drive him. Do you remember me now? No. <laughs> I remember the horse. <laughs> I loved him and he loved me. I remember Hercules. I don't remember you at all. <laughs> no, of course not. Look, can you remember anything else? Look, the room downstairs. Now, can you visualise the room? Yeah. I, I see a room. Yeah. And a, t a table. Yes, yes. Chairs. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And up in the corner... Yes, yes. Uh, ..there's a great big colour television set. <laughs> no. No. There isn't. Isn't there? Oh, I could have sworn there was. Oh, no, listen to me, Ted. When you're as well again, I'm going to look after uh, you. Uh, look... I don't know who you are, but it's nice of you to visit an old man. Lots of people can't be bothered with you when you're old. You're a good boy, whoever you are. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, I'm tired. I'd like to rest. Yes, yes, of course. Go on, you get some sleep. I'll come and see you again. Bye-bye, Dave. Look, I'm taking him home, Doctor. Oh, do you think that's wise? Yeah. Don't you think it would be better for both of you if he went into a home? A home? Yes, an old people's home. You must face the possibility that he may never regain his memory, in which case he'd be far better off in a home. <laughs> what? My dad? In a home? Why not? I've got mine in one. <laughs> You'll be free to live your own life. No, I don't want to, thank you very much. He's my dad. I want to look after him. All right, as you wish. He should be strong enough to leave here on Saturday morning. Saturday morning? But, but, I was going down to Brighton on Tuesday. You see, I've got, I've got this... No, no, no. no that, that's all right. Saturday morning will be fine. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Oh, at last. Oh, blimey, what a dump. <laughs> I don't live here, surely. I think I'll go back to the old... No, no, come back, come back, come back. No, it's, it's quite nice, really. I'm sure you'll be happy. Now, you always sit down here. Do I? Eh? Bend your little leg. There, <laughs> that's it. Now take your little hat off. And now I've got a nice surprise for you. Where? Over there, there in the corner. It's a television yes, set. Yes. It's a colour television set. Yes, it's a coming home present. Oh, that's smashing, ain't it? <laughs> Here, 
It's only a 21-inch screen. They're making 23 inches. Why didn't you get a 23-inch screen? I couldn't afford a 23-inch screen. You could have if you hadn't bought that car. Yeah, no, no. But, well, I lost quite a bit on that when I sold it back to the... When I, when I sold... What car? <laughs> I? How do you know I bought a car? You don't even know who I am. It's the television set. It's brought it all back. I remember now. Oh, Harold, my little boy. What a lovely present. You've done it again, haven't you? You had me over again. You never lost your memory at all, did I you? I did, I did. It's going again. Where am I? Who are you? Ah, oh, shut up! What a lousy, diabolical trick to pull. How could you stoop so low? You knew I always wanted a car. Yeah, you don't want a car. Look, I'll switch it on. Ah, that's much better. This is the life. The old fire going, nice comfortable chair, colour television set. What more could you ask? I mean, what else would you be doing now? At this precise moment, Muriel Duddy. <laughs> Instead of which, she has gone to Brighton with another bloke. Oh, look! The weather forecast in colour. Ah, oh, how very exciting. I never knew he had a red nose and a green face. <laughs> Come and look at it. No, thank you. Unless he predicts an earthquake in Brighton, I don't want to know. Good night. <laughs> You've been listening to Wilfred Bramble and Harry H. Corbett as Steptoe and Son, with Anthony Sharp as the Doctor, Joe Manning Wilson and William Edel. Written and adapted for radio by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson and produced by Bobby Jay. Bobby Jay!